a glass of lemonade. A baby on my knee, I think I got it made. You'd best be believing, I'm never leaving evening shade. Got a southern breeze singing through the pines. Cool as a julep in the summertime. You'd best be believing, I'm never leaving evening shade. They got 10 cent stores, no locks on the doors. And everybody knows your name. They got Sunday school, the golden rule. And every day that passes is slower than molasses. And you can't help but smile, lying in the shade. So come on down and you'll be glad you stayed. Don't talk about leaving, I'm never leaving in the shade. You better leave. The special on PBS last night was all about the human spleen. You don't mind? I'm trying to eat here. Just keep your human spleen to yourself. Oh, don't be so squeamish, Woodrow. Your body is your friend, the temple of your soul. Treasure it, respect it. Well, don't impress me a gob of that butter. Harlan, if you really felt that way, you'd be more careful what you put in that temple. Yeah. Looks to me like that temple's overcrowded. <laughs> hey, everybody! Uh, Herman Styles finally joined the ranks of the employed. Lunch is on me. <laughs> oh, what the hell? <laughs> oh, a stable boy job came through, huh? No, Rusty and I kind of had a fight. Oh, is Rusty the man who owns the stable? No, Rusty's the Clydesdale in Style 3. <laughs> what a jerk. So what are you going to be doing? Oh, y'all are looking at the new assistant produce manager at the Kroger. Come see me, Wednesday through Sunday, 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. Steer clear Thursdays, though. I cut carrot sticks. I'm not liable to be all that talking. Oh, wait a minute. Could you get me some of those shiitake mushrooms? I heard that if you soak them in water, that they swell up to, like, ten times their normal size. Now, hold it together, Merlene. I thought you were going to substitute for Mrs. McBride at the high school. Oh, yeah, but that's only eight weeks, though, until she has her baby, and it's a home ec class. I'm talking here about a job that's got a future. We're talking fruit. And it don't stop there. Six months, year tops. I could move into me. Well, could Jerry be far behind? Look, I'm serious about this. I'm talking about a job that's got benefits. I get major medical, I get a pension, and once I move into meat, dental. Harlan, just think. People all over the world grow food. They give it to Herman. He sells it to us. Well, it's, it's like being part of a global market board. You know, Merlene, when you talk like that, I start to wonder just how many good years we have left together. <laughs> Any mail? Not much. Oh, another one of those sweepstake things. No, I never win at that. I never even come close. I'm, I'm giving up. All right. <laughs> Wait a minute. He didn't tell me I was a finalist. <laughs> this changes everything. Oh, honey, I forgot all about this. <laughs> Will's teacher huh? just sent us a note saying mm. to remind us that uh, how we're scheduled to help out in Will's class mm -hmm. for a few hours the rest of this week. You know, I did it last year. Yeah, you know. And oh, the year before that. Honey, you see this key and here? Year... You scratch this little silver spot here, sir. If a number is under this little silver spot that corresponds with this number over here, we own an A-frame cabin in Petaluma, California. <laughs> Would. Don't change the subject. I can't do it this year. I can't. I, I'm going to be in court all week. Um, just call in sick. Yeah, tell me you have to have your gallbladder out. What is the problem, Wood? You're a teacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm a zookeeper. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hi, guys. Mwah. Are you going to help teach Will's class tomorrow? Will you please, Dad? Don't let bow. I already told everybody that you're coming. Oh, I don't know. Mwah. Please. 
Okay. I'll do it. Thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Billy Ross can be kind of a bully. <laughs> Billy Ross. I'm bully. pretty sure you can take him. <laughs> Come on, Bill. Hey, everybody. Hey. Well, I don't think this day could have gone any worse. Brought you zucchini. Oh, did you find another tarantula among the bananas? Did we let that go? It looked like a tarantula to me. Uh, and he had to kill a tarantula with a zucchini. It turned out to be a big lob of twisty ties. I'm in food preparation. I can't be too careful. That's why he packs a zucchini. Look, I didn't come here to talk about that. I came here to talk about this letter that I got from an old high school teacher of mine, Bill Taxerman. Oh, yeah, you've talked about that guy. Yeah, well, he's coming to Arkansas, and he wants to stop through evening shade and visit with me. <laughs> so what's wrong with that? You love him. I know I do. The man changed my life. He single-handedly inspired me to make teaching my life's work. I've been corresponding with him for years. But last year, when I got fired, I, it, I didn't have the heart to tell him about it. And now I don't know what I'm going to say. Well, I got a crazy idea. Why don't you tell them the truth? What, did I quit teaching? I sold out higher education for the security of major medical, a pension, and all the summer squash I can eat? <laughs> all right. Then uh, make believe he's a tarantula and put him over the head with a zucchini. <laughs> then run like hell. Children, let's all welcome Will's father, Mr. Newton. Welcome, Mr. Newton! Thank you. Now, I know you'll all be on your best behavior, so we won't have another nasty incident like we did last week with Peggy's father. <laughs> That's enough. Godspeed, Coach. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Where, where are you going? Well, I'm leaving so I can do my math tutoring. Leaving? Like leaving me alone? Leaving? Well... That, that's the point of the Parents Helping Teachers program. Freeze the teachers up a few hours every day so we can help out in other classrooms. By the way, what plans do you have for the children anyway? Plans? Oh, for God's sake, man, you gotta have a plan. These are seven-year-olds. Well, I, I thought I'd start with the, you know, the little engine that could. We'll always like that. And then some vanilla wafers, and then they take a nap, you know, put little heads on the table, take a nap for an hour, an hour and a half. Sounds like the plan Peggy's father had. <laughs> what happened to Peggy's father? Well, some people aren't meant to be left alone with 16 kids. You see, children aren't unlike dogs in their ability to sense fear, but if you stay confident, stay in control, don't make any sudden moves, you should be fine. All right. This is what we're going to do today, kids. You know something? What's that? You're tall. Oh, thank you. I don't like tall people. I don't mean to scare you, but Peggy's dad is tall, too. <clears throat> I'm sure he couldn't help it. We made him go away. <laughs> oh. I tell you what, let's do a fun math problem. No, 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 this is going to be fun, I promise. Now, Eleanor, let's just imagine that there are three apples, see? And uh, you take a bite out of one. Has it been washed? Uh, <laughs> what? Has it been washed? My mom says you should never eat unwashed fruit because they spray it with poison and you could die. All right. Forget the apples. Let's just say, Andrew, they're cookies. There's three cookies here, see? Maybe they're chocolate. I'm allergic to chocolate. All right. Let's just say that there's three cowboy hats, see? They don't look like cowboy hats. They look like apples. <laughs> Yeah. 
Nap time is over. <laughs> She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain. She'll be coming round the mountain. She'll be coming round the mountain. You're just like Peggy's dad. Mm -hmm. And no, at least my dad thinks stairway to heaven. <laughs> Come on, you gotta do something. Can you do the splits? I never could do the splits. Well, once when we played the Dallas Cowboys, they made me do the splits, but I didn't want to. Oh, uh, then maybe just say our sick and go home. I know it's none of my business, but this is my place, and I'm wondering, what the hell are you doing? Oh, hi, Ponder. Listen, uh, ex-teacher of mine's coming by here any minute. I just want to make sure everything looks real nice. Do you have a, a cut flower and a bud buzz I can put on this table? What you gonna do, propose to him? No. I just want to jazz the place up a little bit. Well, I could change the cream in the dispenser, if that would help. Good idea. Well, now, listen, Ponder. Uh, Taylor's gonna be coming by here in just a little bit, and he's gonna be saying some real nice things about my teaching. I've been thinking about it, and it'd be real nice if you'd say some nice things, too. You know, come on now. You could throw out some words like, uh, gifted. <laughs> Maybe unbelievable. <laughs> Maybe even mythical. <laughs> How about delusional? Deeply confused and just plain nutty as a fruitcake. Joking, you. Styles, are we keeping you awake, <laughs> Mr. Taxer? <laughs> oh, it's good to see you. <laughs> I want you to meet the best teacher I ever had. This is Bill Ta Bill Taxerman. This is Ponder Blue. He owns this joint. Well, it's very nice to meet you, Mr. Ponder Blue. Nice to meet you, sir. Ah, uh, Herman is unbelievable. Uh, I mean, his teaching is um, mythical around here. Is that right? Uh, yes, yes, sir. He is really something. Really, really something. Uh, and I have nothing else to say, uh, except... Uh, uh, would you like a cup of coffee? I would love a cup. Thank you. Would you like to have a seat? Wanda, take a cup of coffee to Mr. Taxman and that fraud he's sitting with over there, will you? You got it, Bob. And then I started teaching history and biology, which, of course, started causing problems because it made my math students jealous. I mean, you know how kids are. They don't want to share you with any of the other departments. <laughs> Herman, that is very impressive that you made quite an impact on those kids. <laughs> Here you go, you teaching God, you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh... I wish that I could brag about some of my students and my classes, but... Listening to you, I can't. You see, um, I quit teaching. What? I quit. I was a little embarrassed to tell you about it. Sitting here listening to all these wonderful success stories of yours. But, Herman, I just can't lie to you. But how could you give up teaching? I don't know. I guess I just got burned out. What with all of those budget cutbacks and the overcrowding. Well, where does that leave your students? I mean, Mr. Taxman, everybody who's ever been in one of your classes has been inspired by you. You've changed people's lives. There are lots of other teachers. Not like you, they're not. Well, I I've been lying to you, too, Mr. Taxman. I can't keep it up. <laughs> I'm not teaching, either. 
But I got laid off. I never could have quit, because teaching's the most important thing in my life. You made it that way. Influencing lives, teaching young people ways of looking at the world that might never have occurred to them otherwise. Helping people think for themselves. Can't think of anything in the world more rewarding than that. I mean, everything we are, everything we hope to be in our lives is because of our teachers. <laughs> Do you really have something that's more important going on than that? Today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to tell a story. You mean you're going to tell a story? Yeah, and it better be good, because we have short attention spans. <laughs> we're going to tell a story, all right? You see, I start the story, and then I say, change. And then one of you picks up the story and carries it on. Yes. How do you know what the story's supposed to be? It doesn't matter. You just make it up. Anything that pops into your little red-headed mind. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a guy named Lance. He loved astronauts. So when summer vacation came around, his family took him down to Florida to see the space shuttle. And, you know, they weren't watching him. And he snuck off to change. He went to change? No, he didn't go to change. I mean, he went to, and I say change, and you pick up the story. So, anyway, his parents were not watching him, so he snuck down the beach to... And bought a motorcycle. Good. Yeah, and then joined the Hell's Angels. Yeah, and then got a tire iron and went into a bar and knocked the Change! Out, where he met a princess who had her own castle. She liked Lance a lot, but not his motorcycle. So she told him he would have to choose between her and his motorcycle. Hi, Erwin. Oh, hey. Hey, listen, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. I just thought I'd drop by and see what y'all are up to. Oh, that's okay. I'd get up, but my legs are blocked. Uh, this, this is Mr. Styles, kid. Hi, Mr. Styles. We, we were playing that game. Remember, as kids, we used to play this game where you, you start the story, and then you go change, and the other person picks it up. Oh, and, yeah. 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 We were right at the spot right here where Lance, he loved astronauts, had to pick between the princess, beautiful princess, and the motorcycle. Oh, that's a tough choice. Right? <laughs> and Will. He chose motorcycle princess. 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 He chose the hog. Yeah. Yeah. He invited the princess to come with him, but she couldn't. Because the evil witch had cast a spell on her that... Change to Mr. Sal. Uh, oh, okay, uh, evil, evil witch. Okay, the evil witch. She had this great big old ugly head. <laughs> and she only had one big eye. Yeah. And there was an eye booger right in the corner of it. Yeah. But you know something, though? She told Lance that Lance and the princess could actually stay in... They could, they could stay in that castle or they could leave that castle any time they wanted to. But now... That was an awful pretty castle. And the prince had lived in that castle all her life. And now Lance didn't want to hurt her feelings, because he wasn't a bad guy. He was just a little bit confused. I mean, Lance couldn't decide whether he wanted to ride the space shuttle, whether he wanted to ride a motorcycle, or whether he wanted to be an assistant produce manager at Kroger's. <laughs> You see, his problem was he was just having a little trouble finding out where he belonged in his life. I think he found, though, that for him, he should stay right there in that beautiful... Castle! With that pretty... Princess! So that he could live happily... Ever after! Yes. Oh, yes! Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, saved by the bell. Oh, thanks, Bob. Say, Will, you got any suggestions about what we could talk about this afternoon? Nope, not a one. Eh, let's try that. <laughs> you guys are pretty good. Well, I guess some of us just have teaching in the blood. Probably always will. <laughs> uh, uh, Coach Wooden Newton, I'd like you to meet Mr. Bill Taxman. Uh, I've heard a lot about you, sir. I'll be right over here. I'm just going to uh, sharpen some pencils. Oh, okay. Mr. Herman, I'll just stop by. Say goodbye. 
Actually, I'm glad you did stop by, Mr. Taxman. I've been thinking a lot about the things that you told me earlier, and I don't know. I think I understand, you know, why you chose to do the things that you did. But after being in this classroom with these kids today, well, I sure know what I have to do. I don't belong in produce. <laughs> I belong in a classroom, and I hope someday you'll realize that that's where you belong, too. Herman, I never quit teaching. <laughs> what? It's my life. Oh, now, come on, just a little bit ago. Now, Herman. Yes, Mr. Dexman? Sometimes teaching is helping someone rediscover a passion that they've always had. Yours was starting to dim a little and need to be stirred up. Just like that boy in that story you was telling. You needed to realize where you belong. And the only way you were going to realize that is if you got back into a classroom again and just did it. I uh, guess I still got a few tricks up my sleeve, don't you think? I'll say. Tell me something now. How'd you know I wasn't teaching anymore? I have my ways. <laughs> Coach Newton told me. Well, Herman, goodbye. I'm glad to see you found your way back. Let's see. So long, Coach. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Quite a guy, huh? I just hope someday that I can get a student to look up at me the way you look up at him. Yeah. I hope that for both of us. You know something, I have no idea how all this happened, but I want to thank you. I did it as much for me as I did for you. What am I supposed to do with all that damn broccoli you gave me? Oh, that's easy. You just steam it, butter it, and serve it with couscous. <laughs> you learned a lot at that grocery store, didn't you? Uh, that's nothing. Yeah? Do you have any idea what sausage is made out of? No, and I don't want to. I don't blame you. I'll give you a hint. Nothing's wasted.